Let's create a simple navigation menu in Unity. And now this navigation menu that we're going to create is in a lot of different games and apps. But we're going to reference the one in the app called Zero. And as you can see on the screen, they have a navigation bar on the bottom. You can click the buttons in there and it takes you to different views that you can interact with. You can also follow along with this lesson on our blog. The link is in the description. Other reasons to follow along on our website is we'll provide the source code for this lesson. You can copy and paste if you want to speed up your process, but we do only allow the code to members. Okay, I have an empty project. I've just changed it to two by three and then moved the project window down here. Uh, I just like this, this setup. If we go ahead into the hierarchy, go down to UI, can, uh, let's just add a panel already. Oh, let's change the free aspect ratio to a nine by 16. So it's more mobile friendly. Nine by 16 seems to work really well with my Galaxy S9. Let's click on the canvas and make sure the constant pixel UI scale mode, constant pixel size gets changed to scale with screen size so that as the screen gets bigger, um, so will the canvas. And drag the canvas scaler match to height instead of width. Okay, let's duplicate this panel and let's rename this second panel to navigation bar. Let's grab these blue dots, drag them down to where we think is good, right about there. And we can drag the anchors down. Actually, we could probably just go to this box and do center anchoring like so. Let's click on the navigation bar in the hierarchy and go to the inspector, add component, type grid in the search, go to grid layout group. On the button, let's drag the pivot point up to the left, top left. That brings our button into alignment into the panel. And let's duplicate this five more times. Let's go to the navigation bar in the hierarchy and then into the inspector and the grid. And you can mess around with this stuff to view the spacing options. The spacing here gives more space in the X direction. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to zero. And in the Y, it gives more space on the rows. But the cell size is how we can um, fit the buttons nicely in the navigation uh, bar. You can even change the spacing to be a little bit negative. So they're right next to each other. Um, increase the cell size. If we're going to make this a little bit like the um, fasting app, the zero, we can change these buttons to their buttons. Um, timer for the first one. Second one is fast. Third one is history. And the fourth one is learn. Before we duplicate this panel, let's go ahead and add a text element. And let's say this text is timer for our first panel. And to change the background to white, kind of like our uh, um, fast app, we can just select this background image and instead of the background image, we could uh, select an input field and go to color and change the opacity to 255, which will give us a white background. Let's duplicate these panels um, five times. So control D. And if you select these, drag them up, fit them under this panel. So they, we keep them all in the same area. Let's change the text on this, the second panel to fasts, third panel to history, fourth panel to learn. Okay, we're ready to create the script. So let's right click create folder, name it scripts. Let's right click when we're in that folder and do C sharp script, we can say navigation. 
call navigation, double click and open it in Visual Studio. We can remove the start and update functions and let's create some placeholders for our panels. We can do public game object panel one and we can duplicate this line and do it five more times. Two, three, four, and five, and six. Usually if you're having to do this, you might as well be putting it into an array and I can show you how to do that. Public game object and you put these brackets on the game object and then the next it's looking for an array of game objects, so we can name this uh, panels. We aren't going to do anything with this yet, but in example two, we will. All right, the first function, we can say a public void um, page one. And let's do panel one dot set active to true. Panel two dot set active the false panel three. Well, we can actually just copy this line to probably speed up, speed it up a bit. And change. Three, two to three, two to four, two to five, and then two to six. All right, what this is doing is it's setting uh, panel one to be the only active one and all of the rest to be false. Uh, let's copy this function, name it page two, change the true to the second one, And let's see what we have so far. Let's go back. And uh, we're going to need to connect these buttons. Oh, we also need to put the navigation um, onto the navigation bar. So click on the navigation bar in the hierarchy, drag on the navigation, and these are looking for panels. So we can go ahead and drag those into their spots. Okay, let's go to our first button and let's go on click, hit plus, and we can drag this navigation bar into this non object area. Go down to navigation and do the page one function. We can do that again to our second button, drag in the navigation bar, navigation page two. Okay, if we hit play, when we hit this first button, it should deactivate all these panels in the hierarchy and only leave the first panel. And then if we switch to the second button, the second panel will show. And we can see that the text is changing as well. So you can keep doing that this way with the rest of the buttons and, and have all of the panels work. But there's another way to do it that uses less lines of code. And so I'm going to start on to that. And that's example two on our on the blog post for this lesson. So because we have this array of game object panels, we don't need the rest of these placeholders because this is going to be our placeholder. Then uh, let's also change this to serialize field. Let's change this function to Navigation click. Could even be navigation bar click. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna run through all of these uh, positions in the array with a for loop, and uh, so we can do that by just doing for loop. Um, int equals zero. Or int i equals zero. I is less than panels dot length. And then I plus plus. This will increment through our 
for loop. And then each position in our array will need to start with zero. So we go panels, we do a bracket, and let's hit I because our first I will be a zero. And then we can do dot set active to false. And we can remove all of these lines. Let's go ahead and test out what we have. Um, if a button gets clicked, it should turn all of the panels to false, but we also have to make sure that our uh, array is uh, filled. So here's our, array, uh, our panels, our array of panels. And if we go ahead and drag in panel one, panel two, Panel three, panel four, panel six. Okay, we we've uh, put in all our panels to the array. Then let's check our buttons to see if they are working correctly. So it's saying that we're missing that page one because we no longer have that function. But if we go to navigation, we should have the navigation bar click. Oh, we got to have a parameter in here so that we can um, determine which button is being clicked. So if we do game object, the active panel, And we save that and go back to Unity. And okay, we gotta reconnect this. And it gives us a game object to um, add in there. So with button one, we want panel one. Um, with button two, we want panel two. So after the for loop, after we've set everything to false, if we type active panel dot set active to true, it should end up with what we want. Let's set up this button two. Make sure this button two is set up. And we can let's set up button three just to make sure we have enough buttons to Make sure it's working. Drag in the navigation bar, go to navigation, navigation bar click, it's asking for a game object. This is the third one, which is panel two. And let's save the scene and control S, hit play. All right, it deactivated all of those. De and we hit the second button, turned on panel two, turned on panel three. Awesome. You just have to keep connecting the rest of these panels, get some good practice in by hitting the add button on the button, on the on click, drag the navigation bar because we've, that's where we've connected our script to. Go to the uh, function that you set up, which is in the navigation script and it is in navigation bar click. It's even telling you that it wants a game object when you go and select that. It's pretty awesome. Navigation, it's looking for parameter game object. Drag in panel three. Awesome job following along. I hope this was really helpful. Um, as you can see, this panel is super close to the one that is on the fasting app zero that we demonstrated before, as I'm showing you right here. All we need to do is add some icons, some color, and we can do that in the next video. We can also show you how to add even more content to these pages, you know, so that it's more than just the screen space, but that you can put in a scroll window for each panel and have quite a bunch of uh, space to add detail to. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment. Let us know in the comments 
what menus you guys want us to be working on uh, next after we get this one completed. The next video, we're going to get the icons and color to make it look more professional. And it will be great. I hope you guys follow along in that one.